Well, hey there, everybody. Uh, so today we're going to work on chapter 13. So let's get right into it. Okay, so it's three by three. I'm just going to uh, do the square itself. And, you know, it doesn't actually give the dimension for the, the square on this side, but that's okay. You'll see, you don't really have to know that. And I should have chose a sheet metal part, so if you didn't, make sure you choose convert. And we're going to change these settings before we do anything. The K factor should be 0 0.44. Yeah, it defaults to that. Okay, perfect. So basically you just need to change that thickness and the material. So then we'll do a face that way. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and draw the circle stuff in there. I'm only going to draw part of this and we'll pattern the rest around. You know, I kind of played around with this earlier and it takes a lot more time to trim all of this versus just uh, doing a, a quadrant and then patterning the rest. Okay, so I'm just going to delete all this crap. Okay, so I'm going to try to put these as diameter dimensions. It's going to, uh, you know, look a little goofy, but I'll, I'll edit them in a minute. And if you don't remember how to, just dimension, click, right click, and then choose your other option. Okay, so 2 2.6, 2.25, 1.9, 0.55, 0 0.2, and 0.85. Alright, so then we need to put in that 0.3 divided by two dimension, you know, because it was 0.3 between two of them, so. Same for this side, and I'm just going to set it to equal the other 0.15 dimension. Then the only thing we need is some collinears, saying all these lines are in line with each other. And there we are, fully constrained. We can do a cut. And then we will do a circle pattern. We only need four. Okay, so there's that. Now we need some flanges. And we'll try this side. I can't remember. Actually, let's do the other one. And I'll kind of show you what you can toggle to play with the edges. Okay, so first of all, I know it's 0.75. But now let's look at the side view and talk about it. 
So if you notice, this chosen selection is going to trim that three inches out. Uh, so if I choose bend position, you know, it says inside of bend face extends. That's saying basically that the bend will end at the edge of that rectangle we drew. But we know we need it to be three if you're looking at this from the inside of the fold to the other inside. So we need it to come to here. You know, that three dimension. So when I click here, then it goes to the end of that square. So that's clearly too big too. But if I choose this one outside of base space extents, you see it, it gives us that perfect three that we were looking for. So we're going to do that. And then uh, the 0.75 is giving us the length. So that should be 0.75 because it should automatically do from here to here. 0.75. Yep. So, and just confirm we're right in this direction. We should have three in between. And we do. Uh, and, you know, I guess I didn't mention it, but, you know, technically, if you changed your, uh, your corners, you would see it, you know, cut in later. But the one that it has you do is just the default trim to bend. <coughs> and this part is kind of quirky, but you can't choose all four edges. You have to do them one at a time, uh, which kind of sucks, but it is what it is. Okay, so this one's a little different. We know we need it to be inside so that it's flush like that. We're going to play with the height datum then. So I don't think you can see it in this view, really. You can't. Um, so when you're looking at these, it says bend from the intersection of the two outer faces. So that says, you know, it's here to here, that edge. It does the, the amount. This says from a two inner. So, you know, say I wanted to get the value from, you know, this edge, which is what we do need, I think, <laughs> you know, it would give you that high. So it's basically adjusting your height. Actually, it might be this one, parallel to the flange determination detail face. So that's this face, and what we need is this 0.3, and then we're going to do uh, just, we can only squares, so we're going to do 0.25 plus 0.3, so 0.55. We're going to choose that parallel to face, and then before you hit OK, hit this little arrow. This brings up advanced options, and we're going to want to change this to width. And that's the reason we can't do multiple edges. When you choose to change this, it doesn't let you do multiple instances of you know that same manual flange. And then hit OK. It'll do the reliefs, and I believe nope, it's not the right option. OK, so let's try this one. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so for reference, it was, in fact, the, the interfaces option. And then we've got it aligned here. So before you go ahead and do the other ones, just go ahead and finish this one up instead. I can't remember what this is. I think it's... 0.26, yeah. And then we know that it's, you know, the equal to the square part, so we can just do tangents and all that. And here's another quirk with uh, sheet metal stuff. You know, if I choose cut, it works in a circle, uh, but it doesn't let you just, you know, use the edges there. So we're going to do extrude cut <laughs> so we don't have to draw on a little triangle edges. It's going to cut through all. Now, we're going to pattern this. So we'll choose the flange, flange cut, and our axis. And a circle pattern only works when it's in the quadrants in this case, uh, which conveniently ours are. So we can put four and it's fine. You know, if, if we had a, you know, six or eight, we would have to do a rectangular pattern. But in this case, circle is going to be your best bet. That's, uh, that's pretty much it. All right, so next we'll talk about the sheet metal rectangle to square transition. Uh, it's actually pretty basic. Let's see, so we're going to draw two sets of rectangles offset. 
add in some fillets to replicate bend radius and outside and inside. And then that should be it after a shell and a conversion. So yeah, okay. We'll go ahead and start drawing that. And it's gonna be a six by four rectangle. We'll do two point center. Doing it this way, we won't have to actually have to bother with uh, doing our centering dimensions like it shows there. So then it's a two by two square uh, offset. Somewhere it should show it. <laughs> Four inches apart. Okay. So we'll do offset from plane. Four inches. And I'm going to go ahead and turn that sketch or the plane visibility off so we don't have to worry about it getting in the way. And we'll do a two. I'll set it to equal the other side. <coughs> Okay, so then we will go ahead and do a loft using our two profiles. And we'll do a shell 0 0.0625, 1 16th. All right, so next will be bend radius, which will be material thickness. And then the outside will be the bend radius plus the material thickness. Pretty straightforward, but uh, you know that's always going to be the relationship when you're dealing with cheap metal. Now, granted, your your bend radius, your inside radius, may not necessarily be material thickness. A lot of times, uh, people do material thickness plus an eighth, for instance. Uh, but you know the relationship for the outside will always be the inside radius plus the material thickness which was 0.125 total here. So then we need a seam. So I'm going to actually jump ahead here. <clears throat> it actually says to convert it after, but what I would rather do is to convert it before so we can use the actual rip command here. I believe we'll be able to use it. I'm willing to risk it though. Okay, so I, I constrained it to the midpoint. We'll choose this face and the rip. There we go. Now, what size did it say? I think it was 0 0.0625. Yep. So, you know, you can either go into the sheet metal defaults and plug in that value, or you can do it here. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, it has this little portion still. So that's fine. We'll do like the book said and just draw in a cut. Try to do things the right way, I tell you. Okay, so 0 0.0625. And then we will set this to be collinear here, collinear here. Then we need to locate it. So we'll take one of these edge center points. Align it to the origin center and we'll do an extrude. Draw. Okay, so now we've converted it. <coughs> we need to go to our sheet metal defaults and confirm we've got our thicknesses set correct. We do not, so we'll hit the pencil. Uh, it's always good practice to change material. It doesn't really seem to matter too much. But okay, so I can change the thickness, and this is where you would put in the seam size. Uh, and this also, if you see, does default to bend radius equaling thickness. <clears throat> so the reason for that is if I try to unfold this without setting the thickness in here, it won't actually unfold. In fact, it won't do a lot of stuff. So you have to be uh, very careful to always make sure that your sheet metal default matches. <clears throat> and if you actually look in parameters, uh, 
the thickness is actually mentioned here. Uh, and you know, I could go in and say, and the shell feature, let's see what it's called, D8. I could actually set D8 to be called thick or something of that like. And then I could actually set it to be thickness, which is the parameter that is controlled uh, in the sheet metal default. So say, you know, you, you struggle with keeping everything synced up. You can always tie it all together. So then if I change it here, <clears throat> it'll update everywhere. You may have not noticed, but it is thicker now. But, you know, you will see it in the parameters. It's not thick equals 0.125, the nominal value column. So that's something to keep in mind. You know, we don't really talk about parameters at this point, but we will. Uh, as we get further along. So I'm just going to change this back to what it was, save and close, and close this box. And then I will hit create a flat pattern. And just like that, it does all the computations and it unfolds it. Uh, so then to get back to your other part, you can either double click folded part and then to go back to flat pattern, double click flat pattern. Or you can actually choose up here on the sheet metal, flat pattern area, or sheet metal, depending on where you're at be an option to jump to each part so you can do it through here i tend to like to just double click but you know the choice is yours on that but yeah actually that's uh gonna be it for this chapter it was a short one so thanks for watching everybody